Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us for our one o'clock program. Today we'll be learning about St. Elizabeth of the Trinity, whose feast day was just last week. St. Elizabeth was a Carmelite nun. She actually lived around the same time as St. Therese, and they have many similarities. And the biggest thing that we can learn from St. Elizabeth is about prayer, and especially of remaining in the presence of God and knowing that he dwells within us. So she was born in 1880 in France. Her father died in um, military service when she was about seven, and this profoundly affected her, of course. She was very close with her, her younger sister and her mother. From the time that she was seven, Elizabeth started saying that she wanted to be a religious, but she also had a terrible temper. And she would also often break out into temper tantrums. And her mother once said to her, you'll either be a saint or a demon. There's no in between for you. But when she made her first communion at age 11 and her first reconciliation, she had a profound experience. And there was a change in her after that. She learned how to control herself better. And she learned how to channel that energy and that zeal that she had into prayer and to loving God. She said at her first communion that she wanted to give her life and return a little of his great love to God. She also discovered at this time that her house, her name meant house of God, and this brought her great joy. And over time, she became very focused on indwelling of the Trinity, which is why her name is Elizabeth of the Trinity in her soul, and that God dwelled with, dwells within her. Elizabeth was very accomplished as a young girl. She was an excellent pianist and she was good at school. She had lots of friends. She loved socializing and parties. But as she got older, she started having this greater desire to be a nun and to live a hidden life in the uh, Carmelite monastery that was close by her house. Her mother was very resistant to this idea and was very attached to her and had a hard time letting her go. Elizabeth also loved the things of the world, as I said, socializing and partying. So she also had a hard time accepting her vocation, but she kept feeling called and felt like that's what God really wanted for her. So at the age of 21, she entered Carmel and she actually read Story of a Soul when it was first released, a very early version, and reading about St. Teresa's life is part of what inspired her to be a Carmelite nun as well. St. Elizabeth, Elizabeth of the Trinity, especially after she entered the monastery, grew in prayer, and she wrote a lot about contemplative prayer and discovering the presence of God within us. She also loved St. Paul's writings from the scriptures and she loved his, his phrase, we exist for the praise of his, God's glory. She said that the goal of her life was to become the praise of his, that is Christ's glory. In other words, her life was solely to bring glory to God. As I said, Elizabeth developed a profound awareness of the indwelling of the Trinity in her soul. And she wrote about this in her letters and her writings, which you still have today. She wrote retreats, which consist of daily meditations, which are very profound and beautiful. And I would definitely highly suggest looking them up. I've read them and they're, yeah, they're just really beautiful. So also like St. Therese, St. Elizabeth of the Trinity also didn't live that long. She actually died at 26. So we can ask, what is this Carmelite nun from France who lived a hidden life and didn't seemingly do much with her life teach us. So the big thing in her teaching is realizing that God dwells within us and the peace that comes from that. So no matter what is going on around us, no matter what chaos or bad things are happening, if we know that God dwells within us and he and his love dwells within us, that should bring us great peace and know that that doesn't change. And St. Elizabeth's time wasn't 
unlike our own, there was a lot of political unrest in France at the time. And there was actually a lot of persecution towards Catholics. And there was a danger of her monastery and many others closing and the nuns being forced to leave. And again, she found this deep peace because she knew that at the end of the day, God was in charge and that he loves us. And we can learn to do everything in the presence of God from her, even in our ordinary tasks. This is a quote from her. We must be mindful of how God is in us in the most intimate way and go about everything with him. Even in ordinary tasks, because you do not live for these things, you will go beyond them. So she talked a lot about praying without ceasing, which again, St. Paul talks about and how to do that. So she can really teach us how to pray and how to maintain peace. Uh, here's another quote that she wrote to a friend. I am going to give you my secret. Think about this God who dwells within you, whose temple you are. St. Paul speaks in this way and we can believe it. As I said, she died very young. And before she died, she said that, I think that in heaven, my mission will be to draw souls by helping them go out of themselves, to cling to God by a holy, simple, and loving movement, and to keep them in this great silence within that will allow God to communicate himself to them and transform them into himself. So St. Elizabeth of the Trinity suffered from what we now know as probably Addison's disease, which is affects the stomach most of the time that she was in the monastery. She died at the age of 26 on November 9th, 1906. Her last words were, I am going to light, to love, to life. And I would like to end with a prayer that she wrote. Oh my God, Trinity whom I adore, let me entirely forget myself that I may abide in you, still and peaceful, as if my soul were already in eternity. Let nothing disturb my peace nor separate me from you. O oh, my unchanging God, that, but that each moment may take me further into the depths of your soul mystery, pacify my soul, make it your heaven, your beloved home, and place of your repose. Let me never, never leave you there alone, but may I be ever attentive, ever alert in my faith, ever adoring, and all given up to your creative action. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. St. Elizabeth of the Trinity, pray for us. Thank you for joining us.